It would be great to spend an entire week meditating and contemplating the passion of our Lord to draw the greatest and most amount of fruit that we can from it. It's a good lesson to us that although these exercises are short, we have a short amount of time to really give consideration to the essential things that Ignatius wants us to. Do know that returning to the passion of our Lord will always be a fruit of, of meditation, a fruit of prayer, a fruitful moment if we can learn how to dedicate time to it. Now, having meditated, contemplated our Lord's agony in the garden, we're going to continue now with the rest of his passion. The twelfth meditation, which will be another contemplation, allows us now to move into a second consideration regarding Christ's passion. But before we do so, let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So like I said, we're in this part of, in this moment of contemplation wherein we turn to Christ's passion. We're going to consider that Jesus dies for us upon the cross. Our first step in moving into this meditation will be the preparatory prayer, the purpose prayer we could call it, wherein we remind ourselves of the importance of placing ourselves in, in God's presence and doing all for his greater glory. And another particular and important aspect about this preparatory prayer is it should be a moment of humility as well. It's not just a moment of placing ourselves in the presence of God and, and having the intention of serving him well in it. It's also a moment of humility to recognize if anything good is going to come from this meditation, it's going to be God's grace at work in me. And so we, we humble ourselves before him begging, begging for that at this moment. Second step would be the history. So there we have from all four of the Gospels, a particular, um, each of the Gospels treatment of uh, this particular part of the Passion, Jesus' death on the cross. So we have John 19, 23 to 37. We have Matthew 27, 35 to 52. Mark 15, 24 to 38. And Luke 23, 34. 246. We can maybe take the, a quick moment at the beginning of our meditation to, to choose one of those Gospels um, and to, to generally read through it, or we can try to, to um, read through all four of them before entering into the meditation, and then simply at this moment in, in the meditation, trying to call to mind those details. Our third step, and remember a prelude, uh, even, even the last step of considering the history is simply a, a prelude. Um, this, this part of the prelude is, is again our mental image, so giving our imagination something to consider. And I offer to you a painting of the crucifixion painted by Fra Angelico. This one actually appears in one of the many scenes of the life of Christ that Fra Angelico painted at the Dominican convent in uh, the convent of San Marco in, in Florence. And I, I chose this one in particular, again, for the reason that he places two Dominicans there in the painting to contemplate truly Christ's passion. One is kneeling there um, maybe with the book of the Gospels in his hand, really seeing how as, as Christ will tell the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, how all of the scriptures speak of his passion. Also, uh, I particularly like this one for, for this contemplation because of the second Dominican who has his arms open wide, um, as if imitating the very, the very physical stance of our Lord, the, the very same bodily position of our Lord. He's, he's mimicking, reflecting, imitating that. Why? Well, because of the particular grace that we're seeking. We are seeking sorrow with Christ in sorrow, anguish with Christ in anguish, tears in deep grief, because of the great affliction Christ endures for me. And that great affliction is ultimately because Christ dies on the cross for me. We can specify it even more in that way. And so that second Dominican there is really imaging that for us. In regards to the actual, actual contemplation, we can first consider the words that Jesus speaks from the cross. 
He spoke seven words as he was dying for us upon the cross. And those seven words, as the Venerable Fulton Sheen would say, are his greatest homily. The cross was his greatest pulpit where he gives to us his greatest teachings, not just by his words, but ultimately also by his example. But in considering his words, we can consider the first word, that he prayed for those who crucified him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Secondly, he pardoned the thief. Today you will be with me in paradise. Third, he recommended St. John to his mother. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Fourth, he said with a loud voice, I thirst, and they gave him vinegar to drink. I've always found that um, intriguing, that Christ and the, and the gospel writers make this point to include that e detail. He spoke this in a loud voice, I thirst, and even when he gives up in his spirit also at the end, he speaks so loudly, it just it shows that, that, that Christ truly is in control and in a real sense of, of his own death. It's not that he is tragically being brought to death. Christ willed his own death. He willed to undergo this. And in his thirst, they gave him vinegar to drink. And here maybe we can pause and consider that how much Christ thirsts for our love, how much Christ thirsts for our fidelity, how much he thirsts for our freedom, really, how he thirsts for us to return that God-given gift of freedom back to Him so that God's will may be fulfilled in us. And how so many times in that thirst, how many times have we given Him vinegar to drink? Fifth, He said that He was forsaken. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Then He said, it is consummated. It is finished. He brings the great work of redemption to an end. And he does so having lived it in an utterly exemplary way of obedience. It is finished, Father. Obedience to your will. I have fulfilled your will to the full. And now I come back to you. And I've done this. He's done this all for love of us. And finally he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. So we can pick one of these seven words and, and really try to hear Christ speaking that on the cross. Hear that whatever he says, he says for us. He says out of love for us. He speaks as an example for us. But so many times we just simply don't take the time to listen to those words and allow them to bear fruit in our life. In this contemplation, we can also try to see and observe see and observe Jesus nailed to the cross for love for love of us see him in his struggle to breathe the cross was was an excruciating physical suffering again like I said in, in the earlier contemplation oftentimes when we consider the sufferings of Christ we think mostly and, and only on his physical sufferings and, and this certainly was one of his great physical sufferings probably the cause of, of his one of the main causes of his death is because of his position on the cross, he, it was a great struggle to breathe. But Christ, if we really think about it and, and keep it in, in mind, Christ willed to undergo this struggle to breathe for us. We can also consider that he, gave, he gives up his spirit. Again, to see that he is the Lord, not only in life, but he is Lord also in death. Deciding when enough, when the time has come to give up his spirit wasn't taken from him he freely gave it back to god the sun was darkened the rocks rent the graves opened and the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom so see how creation reacts to this moment when humanity has crucified their creator redeemer and then he is pierced with a lance pierced with a lance so that what so that blood and water would flow from his side giving birth to the church, the sacraments. All of these, we can try to pick one of them and see and observe and draw fruit from it. 
keeping in mind the grace that we're seeking. I want sorrow with Christ in sorrow, anguish with Christ in anguish, deep grief because Christ dies on the cross for me. See how he dies on the cross for us in these particular, particular details. We have these words, Christ suffered for you, from St. Peter, 1 Peter 2.21. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow his steps. And St. Thomas Aquinas commenting on this says, That the Son of God made man should suffer death was also fitting for this reason, that by his example he stimulates our courage and so makes true what Peter said. Again, remember, why Why is this meditation, these contemplations, why are they so important, these, these contemplations on his passion? It's because Christ sets an example. It stimulates our courage to not be afraid to undergo those deaths to self that we have to, to reorder our life back to God, to detach ourselves from things. Finally, we can, in this contemplation, listen to others not just having listened to Christ, but listened to others. They blasphemed him, saying, Thou who wouldst overthrow the temple, come down from the cross. Mm. See how they're, they're tempting him to come down from the cross. Show us that you are God, not by dying for us on the cross, not by this great sacrificial act of love. Show us that you are God by coming down from the cross. Oftentimes we, we, we can repeat the same thing throughout life. God, show me that you are God. Show me that you are Lord by doing this great thing for me. When really God is calling us to make the sacrifice for him. The good thief says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. The good thief, and those words show us that no matter what state we are in life, what, where we are on the road of life, that it's never too late to fully give of ourselves back to God, to fully entrust ourselves to Christ, to fully allow ourselves to be remade by Him. This thief says, Fulton Sheen, in, in a very beautiful way, he says, this is the thief that stole heaven. He stole heaven on the cross. He found it in Christ. He was a thief in life, and Fulton Sheen says, and even a thief in death, he stole, he stole heaven. Third, the centurion says, truly, this was the Son of God. Ironically, the one who proclaims Christ's divinity, as Christ himself said would happen, in the sense that when I am lifted up, then you will know that I am. And here, lifted up on the cross, it is a centurion, it's a Roman who says, truly, this was the Son of God, who proclaims Christ's divinity. So let us maybe, if, if, if no, the other points don't help, maybe these might help us to consider listening to what others say at the foot of the cross. The one that, that I haven't mentioned here, which is also definitely worth listening to, is our Blessed Mother. Her silence. She speaks no word. Look at her utter fidelity. As if she's silently repeating the same word she, at the end of Christ's life, that she repeated, that she said and spoke at the beginning of his life, fiat. Fiat, Lord, not my will. Thy will be done. And certainly, in, along the same line, we can end our meditation with a colloquy with our Blessed Mother. If we're truly contemplating this mystery, we, we can't make our colloquy with Christ. He's, he's there dead on the cross before us. Who is the one that we can turn to in this moment of colloquy? Our Blessed Mother, who's there at the foot of the cross, speaking to her about the things that, that we have meditated, contemplated, entrusting to her uh, the particular grace or the light that we have received in this contemplation, asking her to help to, to, through her intercession, that it become very fruitful in our life. That we can truly respond to that question, what ought I to do for Christ by laying down my life also for Him in the way that He is calling me to? And we can close out this colloquy with our Blessed Mother, with a Hail Mary. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.